Uh, hello and uh, welcome to this lecture on uh, LDPC codes. Okay, so from this week onwards, we will start uh, looking at low density parity check codes. Uh, in particular, how, how, how the low density parity check codes are specified in the 5G standard, we will only use the, those codes and then also how to decode them. Uh, we will build up the decoder slowly and uh, the decoder for LDPC codes has two important ingredients. Uh, the overall decoder is made up of two smaller decoders used repeatedly and combined in an interesting way. Uh, so the basic decoders that are used in the LDPC decoder is uh, the decoder for a single parity check code and a decoder for the repetition code. Okay. So we have seen the repetition code in some detail. Uh, we have not talked about the single parity check code that much. I will talk about it in this first lecture. And in particular, there is a way to decode both these codes uh, which are both simple and at the same time uh, a little bit different from what we have seen so far. So this lecture mainly I am going to focus on these two codes, the repetition code and the single parity check code and uh, how to build this simple decoder uh, for both of them. Okay? So let me start with the repetition code. So in particular, I will take the 3 comma 1 repetition code okay? and we will look at it uh, with BPSK modulation over AWGN as we have been doing so far and I uh, will talk about a slightly different decoder. It is sort of similar to the ML decoder, it does not do very different from that uh, but uh, we will think about it a bit differently that is all. Okay? So let us get started. Uh, so how does this uh, work once again? You have a message bit M. Okay, it goes through uh, the encoder, you produce a code word which is M M M. Okay, so this is 3 bits, then you do PPSK, we all know what it is by now 0 to plus 1, 1 to minus 1 and you get a symbol vector S okay, and then this goes through noise. and you get a received vector R which is R1, R2, R3 okay, and the decoder has the task of producing uh, M hat or uh, C hat. Okay. So what we will consider in this uh, lecture is a soft in soft out decoder. Okay, so this is the first modification in our uh, decoder. So what do I mean by soft in? We already saw soft decoders before which take in the real value R1, R2, R3 and then produce a output. But their output was only M hat. Right? So traditionally we have been thinking of the decoder as putting out M hat. This is a hard output. Okay? So it tells you what the estimated bit was. Okay? So we will not be interested in M hat in this soft output decoder. We will be interested in uh, some sort of a probability as the output, okay? a probability or belief or there are various words that people use for the soft output. Not only do I want to say what the bit is, but I also want to say how much do I believe in that value for that bit. Okay? So that is the idea behind this uh, decoder. Uh, so this is hard output, we will not be considering that in this. Uh, what we will want here is a soft output. So what I will put out here is uh, L1. L2, L3. Okay. There are three real values that will come out of this decoder. Okay. What are each of these values? Li is uh, let us say belief, I will put this in quotes here, I will define it a bit more precisely later on. Belief that bit ci is let us say 0. So I want some soft output, some real values to come out okay? and uh, that is this definition of Li uh, and, and I want to say that for each of the bits L1, L2, L3, what is what's my belief that the first bit 
is zero, what's the belief that the second bit is zero, what's the belief that the third bit is zero. So actually for the repetition code, it will turn out that all the three values are the same. So eventually you will get the same value for all three and uh, it does make sense, but you will see there are some subtleties uh, in this. Okay. So let me motivate this with uh, some examples. Okay. So it's always good to look at examples. So example, I'll focus on the decoder. Let's say uh, your R was, uh, well, let me take a simple little example here, uh, 3, 2, and maybe I'll, I'll take it as real numbers just to look, look a little bit more, 2.4, 4.3. Okay. So I get three values, all three are positive and all three are fairly large. Okay. So if you look at it for a while, uh, it's clear uh, what these values are. So once again, remember what, what is the line here? So we have this transmission, which is either plus one or minus one and noise gets added. And what I'm receiving here, these 3.1, 2.4, 4.3 are all way out here. Right. So these are the three received values. Okay. So now what does this 3.1 represent? Okay. So the fact that it's 3.1 means uh, I have a certain soft input about what that first bit could have been. Okay. I transmitted the first symbol which could have been plus 1 or minus 1 and I received a 3.1. Okay. So let's say it's here 3.1. Okay. So if you look at 3.1 and you've received 3.1, uh, it's very, very likely that uh, the transmitted symbol was plus 1. Okay, so your belief that the transmitted symbol is plus one is very high. Okay, same thing with 2.4. So you've, you've got 2.4, it's somewhere here. You really believe that the transmitted symbol is plus one. And you also have 4.3 and that's way out here. And uh, that's also a very strong indicator that the transmitted symbol was plus one. Okay, so you're quite confident about that. On the other hand, let's look at another possibility here. Maybe R is 0 0.01, right? minus 2.2 and then maybe uh, minus 0 0.5. Okay. So this is another case here and uh, let me draw that same line once again here and you will see what is going on here is slightly different. So you have plus 1, uh, minus 1. You got something really, really close to 0. So this is 0 0.1, 0 0.01. Okay. It's really, really close to 0. Then you got something far away and then something intermediate. Okay. So now if you look at point zero 0.01, okay, it's really, I mean, of course, if you do a hard threshold, you're going to say the transmitted symbol was plus one. Okay. The hard threshold will go towards this. This is strictly closer okay. but my confidence in saying that the transmitted symbol was plus one is not very high. Just looking at point zero 0.01 it's not very high. Okay. So I don't know whether it was plus 1 or minus 1 because it's just 0 0.01 off. Okay. So in that sense, 0 0.01 also represents a belief about first bit based on R1 alone. Right. Okay. You received R1, that was 0 0.01. So if I'm not given any other information, that's the best belief I have. Okay. On the other hand, if you think about it, once again, very carefully, the same bit was transmitted three times, right? The same bit was transmitted once again, and I got minus 2.2, which means if I've received it here, my belief is quite strong about what the transmitted symbol could have been. It, it has to go to this guy. Okay. So this is a strong belief. Okay. Really, it couldn't have been plus one. It wouldn't have had such a huge noise. Okay, the noise is uh, most likely to have been minus one. Okay, the probabilities work that way. Remember, the Gaussian falls exponentially, so as you go uh, farther away, the probabilities really drop significantly. So minus two point two is a very strong indicator that it's minus one. And remember, from my code, I know that I transmitted the same bit once again. Okay, so to find a belief about the first bit not only should I use R1, I should also use R2 and even R3. Okay. So now R3, you might say minus 0.5 is not as strong as minus 2.2. It's a little bit weaker than minus 2.2. It, it, uh, it, it says it's minus 1. It's, it's much better than 0 0.01, but still 
it it could have been plus one also. I mean, it's not so far away from plus one. Okay, but nevertheless, uh, it's still a stronger belief than 0 0.01. Okay, so when you want to decide about the first bit, you want to take into account R1, but also what R2 and R3 tell you about the first bit. Okay, particularly because the same bit was transmitted again and again and again. This is a repetition code. If the bit was zero, you transmitted plus one, plus one, plus one. If the bit was one you transmitted minus 1, minus 1, minus 1 and all 3 were received for that. Okay, So, you want to use R1 as well as R2 and R3 to compute the belief for the first bit. Okay, So, in other words, if you just look at these examples, it is clear that you compute L1 R1, R2 and R3. Okay, R1 tells you directly what it is for the first bit, but then the second bit and third bit are also the same. So, you need to figure out how to combine R1 and R2 and R3 to tell you about L1. Okay. So, now how to do this combination? There is lots of intuition that one could use and maybe directly decide. Uh, it turns out, I will give you the answer first and then I will tell you how to derive this. So, it turns out the correct way to compute this is L1 equals R1 plus R2 plus R3. Uh, maybe I will put uh, you, you might want to scale it with something. Okay, You multiply by some factor. Okay, So, theoretically you, you, the putting that factor there is good, uh, but in practice people just ignore this factor. Okay, So, ignored in practice. So, you can just say uh, R1 plus R2 plus R3. You do not lose much by that factor. It is a positive factor. Okay, So, you do not lose much uh, by ignoring that factor. Okay. So, this is the answer and uh, this, this is the actual computation that you have to do to find out the total belief about the first bit based on R1 and R2, R2 and R3. All three of them are being used. So, if you, if you look at it, it has two components. One is what is called intrinsic. These two is what are called extrinsic. Okay. So, once again, like I said, we will completely ignore this factor. We will not use this at all. We will only use R1 plus R2 plus R3. Okay, and even that, there are two components. One is the intrinsic belief that you have based on what you received for that symbol R1 directly, and then extrinsic, what comes from R2 and R3. And why do I have to add these three? Uh, one can do a, a small probabilistic uh, derivation here. I'm going to do it very quickly, uh, but. Uh, but, but the moral of the story is you, you can see intrinsically, so, so I mean you can see intuitively why this is R1 plus R2 plus R3, right. So, the same bit was transmitted three times. So, you, you are allowed to add the three received values to get the total belief for every bit. In fact, this is the same for L2 also and L3 is also the same, okay. Except that the intrinsic and extrinsic will differ, right. So, if you look at L2, you have R1 plus R2 plus R3. Okay, So, this is the intrinsic part. These two are the extrinsic part. Okay, Likewise, for L3, R3 will be the intrinsic part. R1 plus R2 will be the extrinsic part. So, what is intrinsic and what extrinsic changes in L2 and L3, but the overall expression is the same R1 plus R2 plus R3. Okay, So, this is an example of a soft in soft out decoder for the repetition code. Okay. So, the soft in soft out decoder puts out three real values, okay, intrinsic plus extrinsic. This intrinsic extrinsic division is quite important, okay. So, the intrinsic one is what you receive from the channel corresponding to that particular symbol, the extrinsic is what you gain or glean out of the other received values about this particular symbol. Okay. So, I am going to do a quick derivation here to show you how uh, this comes from. Uh, the main idea is this notion of a log likelihood ratio. Okay. Okay. So, so, once again I want to briefly comment, if you go back and look at this decoder, those of you who are uh, who have implemented the ML decoder for repetition code and have seen it will quickly recognize this R1 plus R2 plus R3 also showed up in the ML decoder and this is exactly like the ML decoder. Okay, So, what is it that we are doing which is different? Okay, So, what is what is different about uh, this soft output? 
uh, at this point it's not very apparent for this code it's not very obvious it seems like a like an unnecessary thing we are doing putting out soft output okay but when we combine this as part of the ldpc decoder you'll see where this intuition for addition will come from okay so i'll play on this a little bit later on as well uh, but for now let's see a quick definition involving uh, log likelihood ratios and all that okay so once again uh, so 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 this is how uh, log likelihood ratio uh, is defined so supposing uh, i want to ask this question so uh, the probability that c1 equals 0 given r1 okay so remember once again what is the setting here the setting is this uh, c1 c2 c3 right c is c1 c2 c3 the same three bits were transmitted again and again uh, now i want to look at r1 and ask the question what is the probability that c1 was 0 given r1 okay so for this you can do this uh, little computation using base rule you will see that this will be the pdf of r1 given c1 is 0 times the probability that c1 is 0 divided by the pdf of r1 okay the density of the received value evaluated at r1 okay so this is easy enough to write now this is the prior probability and it's equal to half okay why is that c1 is the message itself it could be 0 or 1 with uniform probability okay now one can also so so this is a calculation you can do actually you can you, you can you can write down what the density will be uh, given our c1 is 0 and what is the density of uh, the total density etc and find this out uh, but usually people use uh, something else here they use this likelihood ratio so let me write down what that is you can also write down what's the probability of c1 is 1 given r1 this will be sort of similar to this okay so once again this is also a prior probability and it's 1 okay and uh, it's comfortable to take this ratio here uh, it gets rid of some of the quantities that you don't really care too much about okay and you notice under this assumption of half probability i simply get the ratio of the likelihoods okay so this is the posterior probabilities and this is the ratio of the likelihood okay so this is called a likelihood ratio okay and one can compute this quite nicely okay so remember if c1 is 0 implies the symbol is plus 1 okay and r1 is 1 plus normal 0 sigma squared if c1 is 1 the symbol is minus 1 and r1 is minus 1 plus normal 0 sigma squared okay so this will this ratio will work out as 1 by root 2 pi sigma this is the normal density with mean on the numerator you will have a mean of plus 1 r1 minus 1 whole squared by 2 sigma squared divided by for the denominator you will have e power r1 plus 1 whole squared by 2 sigma squared okay so one can simplify this i'm going to skip the simplification a little bit you will get overall e power 2 r1 by sigma squared okay so this is the likelihood ratio probability of c1 equals 0 given r1 divided by probability of c1 equals 1 given r1 okay the log of this is called the log likelihood ratio and that you can see will work out as 2 by sigma squared times r1 okay so this is the log likelihood ratio and this is the so this is the intrinsic llr okay so you can see it's proportional to r1 this is r1 into a positive factor okay r1 is the most critical component 2 by sigma square actually depends on the channel value if sigma is uh, the channel noise variance if it is small uh, 2 by sigma square is going to become very large so at high snr this factor will be very large at low snrs when sigma has 1 or 2 or value like that 
then the factor is very small okay but nevertheless it's a positive factor and in most cases we will usually ignore this factor okay we will use just r1 to represent this llr okay so this intrinsic llr is sort of the belief okay this is the belief that we spoke about okay so this is just uh, intrinsic llr it's also referred to as the channel llr or input llr okay so this is uh, something important to remember so now whatever your modulation scheme may be whatever your channel may be okay you have when when you use an ldpc code on that channel maybe you're doing you know 64 qam instead of bpsk maybe you have some other uh, channel like a isi channel or something else you're doing ofdm whatever it is you're doing you may have some other factors in there the first step before using the ldpc decoder or any other soft and software decoder is to compute the intrinsic log likelihood ratio or the channel log likelihood ratio for a particular bit okay so this will be the first block that will come in uh, in our case we have just bpsk awg and it's a very simple model uh, the input llr is simply proportional to the received value okay so it's proportional to r1 okay so same thing will happen for r2 as well c2 uh, probability of c2 equals 0 given r1 divided by probability of c2 equals 1 given r1 will also be uh, I'm sorry, probability of C2 equals 0 given R2 divided by probability of C2 equals 1 given R2 will be 2 by sigma square times R2, okay. So, so sometimes I like to call this a small l1, okay. So, likewise l2 which is, uh, you know, let me write this down just for l2 alone, probability of C2 equals 0 given R2 divided by probability of C2 equals 1 given R2 will also work out as 2 by sigma square times R2. Okay, so this same thing for L3 as well, one can write down an expression for L3. Okay, so this is input log likelihood ratio. Now, like I said, I am interested in uh, a final belief, which is a combination of all the three received values. Okay, so for that, what I need to do is the following. Okay, so output LLR, okay, in my SISO decoder. So, this capital Li is actually the log of probability of C i equals 0 given R 1, R 2, R 3, all the three received values divided by probability of C i equals 1 given R 1, R 2, R 3. All the three received values have to be taken into account. This is the output LLR. This is what I really want at the output. What is my final belief after having seen all the three received values? So, if you look at, looked at the previous calculation, it was the channel LLR or the intrinsic LLR. This is the output LLR, which is the final belief after I have seen all the three received values. Okay. So, I am going to compute it, uh, compute L1 first. You will see the com computation of L1 is, uh, is quite simple. Everything starts once again with probability of C1 equals 0 given R1, R2, R3. You will notice once again using Bayes rule that this is the joint density given C1 is 0 times the probability of C1 is 0 divided by the overall joint density. So, once again this is 1 half equal probability assumption. Uh, likewise, you can also write probability of C1 is 1 given R2, R3, R1, R2, R3. This will be F of R1, R2, R3 given C1 is 1 times probability of C1 is 1 divided by F of R1, R2, R3. Okay, so, this is uh, for the repetition code a fairly simple computation. If you take the ratio, you get probability of C1 equals 0 given R1, R2, R3 divided by probability of C1 is 1 given R1, R2, R3 is simply the likelihood ratio, right. So, it turns out for the repetition code this conditional joint distribution, joint density, conditional joint density is easy to write down. Okay. So, the repetition code makes that very easy. Let me show you how that is done. C 1 equals 0 implies symbol vector is plus 1, plus 1, plus 1. So, that implies R 1 equals 1 plus normal 0 sigma squared. Okay. So, I will put N 1 here. R2 is 1 plus N2 
0 sigma squared r 3 is 1 plus n 3 0 sigma squared and n 1 n 2 n 3 are independent. Okay. Something similar happens when c 1 is plus 1, the symbol vector is minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 and r 1 r 2 r 3 are minus 1 plus 1 normal distribution minus 1 plus another normal distribution minus 1 plus another normal distributed value all 3 are independent because different bits go through independent realizations of the channel. So, once you know this, once you know what, what happens when c 1 is 0 and c 1 is 1, you can plug in the normal distributions here. So, this is independent conditional on c 1 equals 0, these 3 values are independent. So, you can factor the things and multiply out and write down as a product. So, let me do that for you here. Okay. So, so my uh, probability of c 1 equals 0 given r 1, r 2, r 3 divided by probability of c 1 equals 1 given r 1, r 2, r 3 is going to be, uh, there will be some 1 by root 2 pi sigma which will cancel on both sides. So, I am not going to write down that part, I will simply write down what happens in the e power term, okay, minus r 1 minus 1 whole squared pi 2 sigma squared e power minus r 2 minus 1 whole squared by 2 sigma squared e power minus r 3 minus 1 whole squared by 2 sigma squared divided by e power minus r 1 plus 1 whole squared by 2 sigma squared e power minus r 2 plus 1 whole squared by 2 sigma squared e power r 2 plus 1 whole squared by 2 sigma squared. Okay? All right. So, that was easy enough. So, notice what happened here, the, the way in which the code words are set up is quite important here, that is why this happened. You can do a lot of simplification, cancelling, etcetera, etcetera, etcetera. You will finally get 2 by sigma squared times r 1 plus, oh, I am sorry, forgot the e power here. You will get e power, a lot of things will cancel, you will get e, e power 2 by sigma squared times r 1 plus r 2 plus r 3. Okay? So, if you take log on both sides, I will get L 1 to be 2 by sigma squared or maybe I will write the 2 by sigma square on the other side because it is a positive factor, it does not affect too much. You get r 1 plus r 2 plus r 3 times 2 by sigma square. Okay? So, clearly you can identify the extrinsic and intrinsic parts now. This is the intrinsic these two are extrinsic. Okay. So, go back and look at what I did and if you want to change instead of L 1, if you want to put L 2, you will get exactly the same calculation. Okay. So, you will see nothing will change, eventually L 2 will also become the same thing. Okay. So, finally, one can write down that L i can be taken to be R 1 plus R 2 plus R 3 times some positive factor which we will like I said, we will set it as 1. Okay, so, we do not bother about that positive factor. If you want exact log likelihood ratio, you have to in, uh, incorporate that, but that is not usually not very, that is not very relevant. All you need to do is uh, find out this capital Li. Okay, so, like I said, Li is the same for the repetition code, simply add the 3 guys. Uh, it changes intrinsic and extrinsic changes, but nevertheless, uh, it is the same. Okay.